，人类滑雪的太阳，首先从阿勒泰升起。In China's Xinjiang, a recent heavy snowfall has covered sections of the Altai Mountains in a blanket of white. For Ma Li Qin, who lives in Kana's Xinjiang, this is a signal that the best time of year has arrived. As the snow season begins, Ma Li Jin is preparing for his newest adventure. But before he sets off, he needs to find his horses that are roaming in the nearby mountains. The slopes are getting steeper and he can no longer proceed on horseback. So he quickly straps on his skis for the uphill climb. These special skis are made of pine wood and they're covered in horse hide, which helps to grip the snow on the way up the mountain and cut through it smoothly on the way down. <laughs> As a tribute to Xinjiang's annual Old Fur Skis race, on January 5th, 2019, nine Tuvans from Kanas, including Ma Li Qin and Meng Ke Yi, have decided to ski from Bai Haba village on the Sino-Kazakhstan border to the city of Altai. 300 kilometers away. They are hoping that the long, arduous journey will, in some way, bring them closer in spirit to the Chinese athletes who will be participating in the 2022 Beijing Olympics. Altai <laughs> Prefecture is located in the northern tip of Xinjiang, between the Tian Shan and Altai Mountains. Even though it's hundreds of miles inland, when the strong westerly winds collide with the water vapor coming up from the Atlantic Ocean and Mediterranean Sea, it creates moderate to heavy snowfall for around 30 days each year. In order to avoid any potential snowstorms, Ma Li Qin decides to advance via the river valley. However, it's not without risks. The deep and unstable snow is cumbersome and they could easily lose their supplies in the river. Deeming it too dangerous to continue through the valley, Ma Li Qin is forced to lead his team up the mountain slope. Shoot, <laughs> 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 
The deep snow makes it difficult to hunt and could make them easy prey for wolves. As night falls, Mali Chen decides they should set up camp. The minus 40 degree temperatures are another challenge the team must deal with. It's imperative they rest and recharge in preparation for tomorrow's equally long trek. <laughs> Battered by the incessant wind, falling snow and distant howling of wolves, their first night is a sleepless one. <laughs> The next morning, the team is up at dawn to continue their journey. Not long after their departure, they come across a deer stuck in the snow. Knowing if they do nothing, it will almost certainly be killed by wolves. Mali Chen takes it upon himself to rescue the poor animal. Once it's safely on its way, the team resumes its cross-country endeavour, only to find the weather takes a turn for the worse. No sooner has the team made it up the mountain pass then the snow under their feet starts to shake. Fortunately, it was just a minor avalanche. But it's a stark reminder of the hidden dangers in this unforgiving landscape. After nine days traipsing through the desolate expanse, the team arrives at the Dundbulag rock carvings. In 2005, a massive rock from the Paleolithic era was found in this cave in Kandigati Township, Altai City. The more than 10,000 year old petroglyph depicts a scene of an ancient people hunting on skis in these very same mountains. Even more fascinating is that there are nine human figures in the petroglyph, the same number of people on their ski team. For them, this incredible coincidence is something more. It's fate, as if they were all meant to be there at exactly this moment. Though their epic journey has come to an end, the adventure will live on in their memories forever. Representing the 2,000 Tuvan people in their region, they have vowed to embrace even more challenges like this one and continue their exploration into the ancient cultures of the region. On the other side of the Tian Shan and Altai Mountains, the amount of snow decreases the farther east you go along the Mongolian Plateau. It is not until one reaches the greater and lesser Xing'an Ranges in northeastern China that another vast snowy region reveals itself.
我们这块太冷，四五十度，我们就去取冰回来化冰。Dongxia is an Awenki reindeer herder. Winter is when she's at her busiest because she has to prepare her animals' food and water in advance for the coming months. Zhuzhu Bei Bei is raising them. The whole year they are in the mountains. The mountains are in the mountains. Wu Dongxia lost her parents at a young age and has been living with her aunt raising reindeer ever since. Her ancestors also used the traditional fur skis to hunt and travel, but they've long been absent from her life. Now, she uses a reindeer pulled sled as a means of transportation. When Xiao Liangu first met his wife, he, too, was looking for companionship and a means to survive in this lonely place. They married soon after and have been making a living raising reindeer together. The Lunar New Year is almost upon them, and Bu Dongxia is planning on bringing her reindeer back home. But after several days of searching, she hasn't found a single reindeer. Distressed, she asks her husband to go deeper into the forest to look for them. A long day of searching finally pays off, and Xiao Liangku soon rushes home to deliver the great news. Together, the couple brings their reindeer home. To them, spending the new year with their little family is happiness enough. Out here, the snow is not considered a burden, but rather an opportunity. Near Yumao is a snowboarder from Harbin. When winter comes, all they can think about is riding a snowboard down a mountain of fresh, untouched powder. The northeast region of China is encircled by the Changbai Mountains to the east, the greater Xing'an Range on the west, and the lesser Xing'an Range on the north, forming a pocket of open land to the south. Here, humid air from the Bay of Bengal and water vapor from China's coastal waters meet the brisk, cold air of the region, temporarily creating a wonderland of snow for 30 to 50 days out of the year. But it's the Changbai Mountains near the east coast that boast the most snowfall, and it's here where skiing and snowboarding gained widespread popularity in China. Oh, There are no paths or groomed ski runs here in the back country, so one is free to go as one pleases. But that also means being far from help and the threat of an avalanche is always present. 
最终一口一看没有路的时候才知道迷路。好了哦，看这什么动物？这样一个 S 线下去。From northwest to northeast China between the 40th and 45th parallels, there's a seasonal snow cover of 1.9 million square kilometers. So these northerners are no strangers to snow. Whatever potential problem or inconvenience the snow might present, the people always find a way to overcome it. is a land of vast territories and varied terrain, and the distribution of snow in certain areas is closely related to the local climate. In Bidluo village on the country's southwestern border, a heavy snowfall has made Bidluo mountain even more imposing than it usually is. These mountains are home to the Li Su ethnic group. And for them, the Kuo Shu festival is as important as celebrating the new year. So the idea of his niece spending it alone is too much for Li Jiming's conscience to bear. Located in the hinterland of the Hangduan Mountains, Bi Luo Mountain reaches an altitude of over 4,000 meters, where the snow doesn't melt, and the paths can easily get snowed over. Five hours later, their boots and socks soaked by snow, they decide to take their first rest and warm their frozen bodies. Learning how to survive out in the snow is a necessary skill for the Li Su people. And now it's time for Li Jiming's son to get some hands-on practice. As the slopes get steeper and the snow deeper, the hike gets more intense. The first leg of the trip has been successful, but in order to get back home in time, they'll have to head back immediately. Having brought minimal supplies, they'll have to make their shelter with what nature provides them. Sitting by the bonfire, Li Jiming shares anecdotes of wisdom and recounts stories of the Li Su people. But it's not all full of boring history and cautionary tales. In fact, one bit of legend seems to stand out in particular to the children. Apparently, the best way to descend the mountain is by sled.
home safe and sound, a large family gathers around the fire with a warm meal and some music to celebrate the Porsche Festival. Blocked by the Himalayas, the warm and moist air currents from the Indian Ocean fail to reach the Tibetan Plateau's backcountry. However, the Yalung Zangbo Grand Canyon and the north-south Hangduan Mountains provide a channel for these currents to surge northward through the canyon and merge with the cold air of the plateau. These currents create a snow cover of more than 2.3 million square kilometers, with an annual snowfall of 50 to 70 days, transforming the region into a breeding ground for winter athletes. Fourteen-year-old Ge Sang Chu Jen has just been selected as a member of the Tibetan mountaineering team. She's about to leave her hometown for a new chapter in her life. Using its inherent alpine resources, the Tibet Mountaineering School is undertaking the important task of cultivating mountaineering and skiing talents for the country. For Gu Sang, this new challenge will test her resilience like never before. Unfortunately, during her intensive training, Ge Sang gets snow blindness. Does anybody want to see your dream? I want to participate in the 2022 Tian Men Festival to take pictures with my mother and father and father. snow-covered hometown on the plateau to the country's capital city. Ge Sang is one step closer to realizing her dream. In total, China has a seasonal snow cover of approximately 4.2 million square kilometers. In this ancient and far-reaching land, people still rely heavily on the wonderful gift of nature, while at the same time embracing their 5,000 years of Chinese history and culture to coexist in mutual harmony. As the curtain of the 2022 Winter Olympics slowly rises, the story of the Chinese people's personal relationship with snow will soon be unveiled in all its splendor.